Um, Mike, uh, what are you doing to uh, create a ecosystem of groupies uh, over at the uh, government <laughs> printing office? Yeah, interesting. Um, the government printing office, uh, I, I think I would view our role as, as an enabler. And I think um, Ray's comments, and thank you for those, are, are really amplify and put a light on that. It's a year of anniversaries. It's kind of fascinating. Um, 75 years in July for the Federal Register. A week from tomorrow will mark the 150th anniversary of the uh, joint resolution that created the government printing office. So we are entering our 150th year, or we're in our 150th year. Um, and the, the um, government printing office for the 150 years has been all about transparency, when you think about it. Um, we've been uh, put in place by Congress to make government information and publications readily available and accessible. And in partnership with the Depository Library Program, we fulfill that mission to allow the information to be easily accessed in paper form, the, the library community preserved it. Um, and the, the library community also provide versioning, so you'd know which, which version you were getting access to. So even back 150 years ago, the cornerstones of um, what we're talking about here today were really put in place. It's just that the technology has moved forward, and fortunately for um, the federal government, having an agency like the Government Printing Office, we have evolved, uh, I think, fairly well to continue to meet those needs. Six years ago, we started working on um, the federal digital system, FDSIS, and it was essentially a re-engineering of the Government Printing Office. Even though the Government Printing Office today is still 23 or 2400 employees, a majority of which are um, tasked with the trade work of doing the, the daily printing of our newspapers, the Federal Register and the Congressional Record. And as Ray said, uh, the presses can't stop. Uh, for 75 years, we haven't missed a Federal Register. And uh, we've only, uh, uh, on a few occasions, have missed our uh, deadline with Congress to uh, deliver the Congressional Record. Um, and it was only missing by an hour or two, but they still get a little cranky about that when that happens, even though they might be the cause. Um, um, but the, the work that, that we do and the, the work that we've done throughout the transformation with the federal digital system has put a, a repository in place that's both uh, what we view as a world-class access repository with enhanced search tools, but it's also the foundation of a preservation repository as well, so that the, the, the publications in di digital form will um, be preserved in perpetuity, the life of the, of the republic, so that they can be accessible now as well as in the future. Something that we learned as we were transforming the agency and, and migrating data from the, the GPO access system into the, the uh, FDSYS system, there were versions of publications in GPO access that we could not read. They were in there in old Adobe formats that we really had to go and scrounge around and get the tools to allow us to actually read our data so that we could migrate it into a a system that could then be um, managed properly. Um, I talk about it as the difference between an information storage system and an information management system. What we had was an information storage system, and what we have now is an information management system. But the work isn't done. You know, we've uh, made great progress in putting XML data online last year for the Federal Register, this year for the Code of Federal Regulations. Majority of the bills are in XML format today, and that's just the beginning. Um, many of the tools that the federal government uses to compose data are still a bit dated. Um, the congressional record is compo composed, as well as the Federal Register, is composed for printing in a, with a tool that is now 40 years old and is in uh, desperate need of replacement so that we can actually compose in XML rather than compose in something else and convert it to XML. Um, 
other challenges that I see are really, it was mentioned earlier this morning, the need for standards. Um, we've done a nice job, I think, with uh, the regulatory information with the Federal Register and Code of Federal Regulations so that there's some standards in place, almost de facto standards that we have been able to create so that it's easy to link things together in you know, list of sections affected, et cetera. But when you start crossing different branches of government and talk about the need for standards, they're desperately needed for us to be able to continue to, to reference and link this data together, and it's something that we just need to, to continue to push. Um, the transformation of data today that's in electronic form to be put into a form that it can actually be managed is a huge challenge. Um, a third of the investment that we've made in our federal digital system over the last five years was spent on migrating data. That's a lot of investment. We've spent over $40 million on our federal digital system, and over a third of that was data migration. It's something that is many times forgotten, but it's a huge part of the challenge. So couple standards with the cost of migration and you'll see, start seeing what the real value proposition is or the benefit of having some standards so that this, this transformation process won't have to be done in the future, consuming a lot of resources. And then the, the third challenge that I really see um, is the retrospective material. Uh, I think that was discussed this morning as well. And, it, and it's more than just scanning. You know, scanning the data is the easy part uh, it's taking the scan data and then parsing it and structuring it in a way that is consistent with a standard or a schema so that it can be used and moved in, in, in the future um, is the challenge um, to be able to do that. But there's a lot of material that really needs to be put into electronic form so that it can also be referenced and linked. Um, so GPO has still a lot of work to do, and I think uh, the role that, that we see is an enabler, uh, an enabler in a way that we've seen today with uh, the examples. And I think it is, again, the be just the tip of the iceberg, well-structured data and well-managed data of, of government information is going to enable applications we can't even dream of today that's going to be very powerful. and, and that's what GPO has been focused on lately and will continue to focus on for quite some time. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Michael.